Welcome to Unit 3, Lab 4, Page 3, Improving Your Graphing App. On this page, we're going to work with a new data set, so we're going to have to modify our tools from the last page to make sure that they work for this one. I've already gone ahead and loaded the grapher from the previous page, so we're up to number two. If we look in the variables palette for this new data set, it's going to be towards the bottom. I can click on the new data set and it's going to report all of the values or all the data that's inside. We can see that there's more columns than there was in the last page and so there's more data that we can work with. Each item in the list has four items inside of it, which is the age and months, the height, the weight, and the gender of the student. Our graph data points was written to expect only two items in each item, so let's actually see what happens when we throw this in there and see how it, uh, how it handles it. So I'm gonna run it, and it doesn't even draw anything. It didn't draw, draw anything. And that's probably because we didn't set the graph scale either. So let me actually set the graph scale before we actually try to draw anything. Uh, let's see. So we, I think it's only going to look at the first two numbers. So it looks like we're in the 130, 140 range or so. So let me set the X min to 130. Let's set the X max to 150. Uh, the Y min, let's see what the second column contains. And it looks like it's probably going to be like the same type of data, 155 I see over here, 153. So let's try making this a little bit bigger. So let's go from 130 to 165 or so. Let's set the graph scale and let's try plotting the data points now. And we can see that it just looks like a big mess. And not only that, but it also has the pen down so it's connecting all of these points. And it's not a very good looking scatter plot. But we're completely ignoring two columns in this data set. So we're ignoring the weight of the student as well as their gender, which isn't good. So let's create a selector so that we can extract all of the different values that we want. So we're gonna make four selectors. We're gonna make one for age. So that is going to be uh, age comma person. And that's going to take in a, let's say person. That's what they named it over here on the on number three. And this is going to report back so let me make sure that this works. This is going to report the first item of the list. So I think in the last, or the first item of person, but let me make sure that person is uh, identified as a list item. So there we go. So I mentioned this in the last page, or in the last video, where I should have created selectors. Oh, actually, I made, I made a mistake here. I created a, a command block here. Can I edit this? Yeah, let's make it a reporter. Uh, I mentioned in the last video that we should make selectors so that it's easily like readable to someone who's looking at our code and they know that, oh, this is the age of the person. When I click this button, when I click this reporter block, it's going to tell me the age of that person uh, instead of saying item one of item or item three of item, which doesn't really make any sense if you're just looking at it. So let's create selectors for the height, weight, and gender of the student. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this quickly. I'm gonna report back the height, and that's going to be of the person. And that's also going to expect a list item that is a person. And let's give it a type of list. And this is going to report back. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna kind of copy the code from my age block. Let's duplicate this. And then all we have to do is modify the item that we're looking at in person. So the height was the second item, I believe. And I'll double check that in just a second. Yes, the height is the second item of each list item. So I can do that. And let me create a new selector. I'll leave this open just so I could use it in just a second. Uh, the new selector is going to be for weight of the person. It's going to be a reporter block. I have to make sure that I take in a person uh, as an input and make sure I give it a type of list because we're going to be looking at list items. And I'm gonna duplicate the report block, but the weight is going to be the third item in this list. So there we go, that looks good. Let's make one last block, one last selector block, and that is going to be the gender. So the gender of the person, which is stored in the fourth list item. Let me just make sure I make it a reporter block. This is also going to be a list item. So let's give it that type and it's going to be the fourth item in the list. So let me just copy the report block from the other one and make sure that this says item four of person. So great, 
I just made all of my selectors, and now it's going to be a lot easier for someone to read the code and understand, okay, if I use this selector, it's going to give me the age of the person. But let's see what else we want to do here. And number five, it says we have to use the above selectors to create custom blocks that report back all of the ages, all of the heights, and all of the weights in the data set. So we're basically making um, new selectors, I guess you could say. Let's see, it's gonna take a little while, so let me just do this slowly. So operators, so instead of age, we're gonna do ages of the people, or the data set, uh, people data. Let's call it, oh no, let's just call it data. It just says data right there. So we're gonna report the ages of the data, and we're gonna pass in the input, call it data. That's also gonna be a reporter block, and of type list. So I have to do that quickly. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna use our map block. And remember, map is a reporter block that applies another reporter block to every single item in the data set. So let me see if I can put it together and then explain that a little bit slower. Map, what map does is it will go through this data set, whatever was passed in as an input, and it's gonna apply this reporter to all of the items of the data set. So what I wanna do is I wanna use my age reporter. Let me bring in the singular one, okay? And I'm gonna leave this input blank. So what map is going to do is it's going to stick every single list item inside of this area right here, inside of this input, and it's gonna extract all of the ages in the data set and report that back as a list. Now, if you don't like leaving an empty block like that, what we could do is actually give it a name. We could use a little temporary script variable, and the person is going to be, or the, every single item is gonna be looked at, and we could do something like this. So that way we don't leave a blank, but just realize that it's going through the data set that's passed in. So let me, let me actually pull this up so we can look at the block in action. So ages takes in a list as input, and that list is going to be this data set, this entire data set that we've been given. Because of map, it's gonna go through each item of the data set, which if you look at it, each item contains these four list values or list items inside each. We have one, two, three, four. And so what my map block is going to do is it's going to apply the age block and remember, age, if we look at it, it reports back the first item of whatever we're looking at. So it's going to report back this first value of each of these items. So it's going to go through this list really quickly and report back all of the ages. Okay, so let me just hit apply. Let me hit apply right here. Let's run it and make sure that it works. And there we go. It reports back all of the ages. So now all I have to do if I want to create the other selectors is replace the replace uh, age person with whatever selector I wanna use. So let's create these blocks. Let me make one for all of the heights. So heights and the data is going to be this data set. It's gonna be in the operators palette. Make sure I give it a list uh, type. So I have to go to the types and say that this is going to be a list that we're gonna be looking at. And now I'm gonna use my map block to go over all of these items. Where's map? Where are we? There we are. I'm going to report uh, map over this data set. And the thing I want to apply to every single item is the height. So I want to make sure I get or I extract the height. The reason we created the selector was so that we can get the height from every single data point very easily and we can read this code. Um, the other way I could have done it is by using uh, item two of blank, but that's not readable. This is very readable. This tells me that I'm gonna be taking the height over of all the items in the data set, and I'm gonna report that back. So I could hit apply, I can test it out by trying heights with all, with all this data. And when I run it, I am getting my heights, I'm assuming. I'm not gonna double check it right now just because I think it's right. Uh, but if I, see, if I see a bug later on, I'll fix it. And let's create the last uh, selector for, for weights. So we want to extract all of the weights. And the data set is going to be data. We're going to call it data. That's going to be our parameter. I have to give it a type. I keep clicking the wrong thing. But I have to give it a type of list. 
And now I can pass in or I can extract all of the weights by using the map block. And I want to use the map block and I'm going to use my single selector for of weight and I'm going to use that on every single item in data set. So this should work. Let me look at the uh, weights. Let's see if it's correct. But I'm going to I'm going to put in that data set and those look right. Let's see these do not look like the heights or the uh, the ages. So we're looking good, I think. Let me just look at ages again one more time. Wait, what's the what is ages in? What's the unit? Oh, age in months. That's how we're getting these hundred year old. I thought it was years for a second. So that's why I was like wondering why we we're getting like a 137 year old person. But it's the age in months. And the last thing we're going to do in this video is number six, which is to create a block that takes in a list of numbers as input and reports the average value of all those numbers. So let's call this block the uh, average block calculator or something. Ah, let's call it just average average of and then I'm going to take in an input and I'm going to name that data again and this data is going to be a list so already I'm starting to like think ahead of the game and think that hey I can use my my selector for like all the ages and remember this reports back all of these numbers so now to figure out the average of all these numbers all I really have to do is add up all of these values and then divide it by however many values there are so I think I can do that pretty easily now that I think about it. To add up all of these values, I'm already thinking that I could use the combine block. And let me go over to the variables palette so you guys can see this. I can combine and I have to, so I have to explain what I'm going to do here to all these values. I'm going to add them up. So let's use the plus operator. So I want to add up all of the values here of the data set. Now, this isn't the average. This is just the total, the summation of all of the values. Now, to get the average, I have to divide by however many number of items there were in data. So to do that, I'm just going to see how many items there were. Let's do the length of data. And I'm going to divide the summation of all of them, so the, the, the sum of all of them. And I'm going to divide that by the length of the data. So this, I think, should work, and we can test it out in a, in a few seconds, um, but let me just try it. Let's apply, let me hit OK, and I'm just going to take a rough guess that I'm looking for a value around like 135-ish uh, for the average of, and let's throw in ages here. It's going to be around that, I think. Yeah, so 140 doesn't seem too far off. Uh, let me just leave it there so that you guys can see 141.55185 so I think it's working let me do the same thing for let's see which one was like a smaller number I think it was um, okay weight so weight in kilograms let's try that so let's try the weights of all of these values and the average of that and it, it's probably gonna be around 40 yeah Perfect. It says 42.6. So if this number had been like, you know, a million or like 300 something, that would have been off. Like clearly the average weight of these, these students isn't like 600 pounds. Um, at least I don't think. It's a little bit too high. So I think my average block, my average of data block is working. And the way that the combine works, if you, if you don't know what a block does, what you can do is you can right click on it and hit help. And this is like a little documentation window that tells us exactly what we're doing here or how Combine works. So this shows actually shows a perfect example of running the, the plus operator on all of the items of this list, 7, 8, 1. So 7 plus 8 is 15, plus 1 is 16. So this shows that I can add up all of the items in a list by using Combine with. I could also use it with, uh, with join words and put the University of California, three separate list items, into one item, University of California. So you can see that combine is going to be useful in this situation. And the way I figured out what to divide it by was to use my length of data block to figure out how many items I have in the list. And that is how you calculate an average. I think I'm going to stop there. And in part two, we're going to finish it up by completing the other for you to do items. See you next time.